Senate will come to order. I ask all present to please rise and join with me as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the absence of clergy, I ask that everyone please bow your heads in a moment of silent reflection and prayer. Reading of the journal. Consent at Sunday, February 7th, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal of Saturday, February 6th, was read and approved on motion. Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal will stand approved as read. Presentation of petitions, messages from the Assembly, messages from the Governor, reports of standing committees, reports of select committees, communications, and reports from state officers, motions, and resolutions. Senator D. Francisco. Some standing committees, I believe. Oh, okay, we'll do the motions first, excuse me. Uh, I wish to call up the following bills which were recalled from the Assembly and are now at the desk. Six, Senate Print 6383, 6391, 6392, 6395, 6427. I now move to reconsider the vote by which these bills were passed. Secretary will call the roll reconsideration. Secretary will read. Calendar number 14 by Senator Flanagan, Senate Print 6383, an act of general business law. Calendar number 22 by Senator Marcelino, Senate Print 6391, an act of chapter 672 of the laws of 1993. Calendar 23 by Senator Little, Senate Print 6392, an act of the insurance law. Calendar number 26 by Senator Seward, Senate Print 6395, an act of insurance law. And calendar number 38 by Senator Lanza, Senate Print 6427, an act of real property tax law. I now offer the following amendments. The Secretary will call the roll on reconsideration. Adapo Flanagan Klein Stewart Cousins Young, eyes 43. The amendments are received. Mr. President, Senator on, page, De Francisco. on page 13, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 40, Senate print number 6429, a bill by Senator uh, Seward, and I ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. The amendments are received and the bill shall retain its place on third reading. Also on page 11, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 27, Senate print 60, 6396, a Senator Larkin bill, and ask that said bill retain its place on third reading. The amendments are received, the bill shall retain its place on third reading. Also on page number 12, I offer the following amendments to calendar number 34, Senate print 6423, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar, the a bill are, by Senator Ranzenoff. The, the amendments are received, and the bill shall retain its place on third reading. Also on page 12, I offer the following amendments to calendar 35, Senate print number 6424, a bill by Senator Bonasek, and ask that said bill retain its place on the third reading calendar. The amendments are received, and the bill shall retain its place on third reading. I now move that the following bill be discharged from their its respective committee and be recommitted with instru instructions to strike the enacting clause, Senator O'Mara's bill 3932. So ordered. I move that the following bill of Senator Ro Robach be discharged from its respective committee and be recommitted, recommitted with instructions to strike the enacting clause, that's number 6359. It is so ordered. I also move to amend Senate Bill 3908A by striking out the amendments made on January 11, 2016 and restoring it to its original print number, 3908, a Senator Marchione bill. So ordered. Would you please recognize uh, Senator Gianaris? Senator Gianaris. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the following bills be discharged from their respective committees and be recommitted with instructions to strike the enacting clause on behalf of Senator Panapinto, Senate number 3632A and 6301. It is so ordered. Please recognize Senator Valeski. Senator Valeski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move that the following bills be discharged from their respective committees and be recommitted with instructions to strike the enacting clause, Senate Bill 621 and 5128. So ordered. Also, I wish to call, on behalf of a Senator Avella, wish to call up his bill 6422, recalled from the Assembly, which is now at the desk. The Secretary will read. Calendar number 33 by Senator Avella, Senate Print 6422, enactment of the vehicle and traffic law. 
I now move to reconsider the vote by which this bill passed. Se the Secretary will call the roll in reconsideration. Adabo Flannan inclines to her cousin Jung, ayes 47. I now offer the following amendments. The amendments are received. Also on behalf of Senator Avella, Bill number 6428, recalled from the Assembly. It's now at the desk. Secretary will read. Calendar number 39 by Senator Avella, Senate Print 6428, and act amend the general business law. Now move to reconsider the vote by which this bill was passed. Call the roll on reconsideration. Adabo Flannan inclines to her cousin Jung, ayes 47. Now offer the following amendments. The amendments are received. Senator DeFrancisco. Yes, could we go to uh, reports of standing committees? I believe there's a report from the Judiciary Committee. There is a report of the Judiciary Committee before the desk, and the Secretary will read. Senator Bonasek from the Committee on Judiciary reports the following nomination. Michael Garcia for the Associate Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals. You may have some order in the House, please. Senator Bonasek. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let me just put my glasses on here. Uh, earlier today, the Judiciary Committee met and considered the nomination of Michael Garcia to serve as an Associate Judge of the Court of Appeals for a term commencing February 8, 2016 and expiring February 7, 2030. Uh, Mr. Garcia is with us today in the gallery. He's a resident of Irvington, New York, in Senator Stewart Cousins District. Uh, pursuant to the provisions of Section 2 of Article 6 of the Constitution and the provisions of Section 68 of the Judiciary Law, the Judiciary Committee has reported the nomination to the floor uh, with no opposition. Uh, joined in the gallery uh, with uh, Michael Garcia is his two beautiful children, Sophia and Michael. And uh, I would like to mention that his bride, uh, Liana uh, Davila, and his other son, Manuel Garcia, was supposed to leave from Puerto Rico yesterday to be here, but their flight was canceled because of bad weather. But I know that your bride and your son are here in spirit applauding you today, uh, Mr. Garcia. Uh, now, just to give you a brief profile of, of Michael Garcia's experience, he served as a clerk to Judge Judith Kay for a couple of years. Uh, he also served uh, nine years as a federal prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney uh, General's Office, in, not, U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan from 1992 to 2001. There he prosecuted a number of high-profile cases involving national security, including the 1993 terrorist bombing of the World Trade Center and the 1998 bombings of the U.S. embassies in East Africa. For his work on these cases, he was twice awarded the Department of Justice Exceptional Service Award, the DOJ's highest honor. He led various executive branch enforcement agencies, including Secretary for Immigration and Customs Enforcement within the Department of Homeland Security, where he oversaw 20,000 employees between 2001 and 2005. In addition, he served as the U.S. Attorney from 205 to 208, where he uh, supervised numerous public corruption matters, state, local officials, fraud, chaired the Attorney General's Advisory Committee on Terrorism and National Security. He's currently a partner in the law firm of Kirkland and Ellis in New York, where he has been for six and a half years. He also served as independent chair of an investigatory chamber of the Ethics Committee of FIFA, investigating corruption in world soccer from 2012 to 2014. He's been a vice president of the Americas for Interpol, the international police organization. I think this is probably 
the most outstanding and diverse and exceptional resume that I have ever seen uh, for a nominee uh, to the Court of Appeals. And I want to thank our governor uh, for this outstanding and impressive nominee. Um, he has a wealth of experience and intellect to bring to the highest court. And the other thing I'd like to mention, in um, when we vetted these Court of Appeals judges as they came before us, and this, as I said, is the sixth one since 2013. And next year, in January of 2017, uh, Judge Piggott has to retire. We would have had seven new Court of Appeals judges in roughly a little over a four-year span, which is quite historic. Uh, but in, in addition, uh, he brings a wealth of commercial litigation experience. And that was a void in all of the resumes of the six judges before us that went up to the Court of Appeals. So uh, we were very impressed with his background in uh, regulatory and commercial litigation. Um, I urge all of my colleagues uh, to support the com uh, confirm the nomination of Michael Garcia to serve as an associate judge of the Court of Appeals. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Bonasek. Senator Stewart Cousins. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to also second the nomination of uh, our new uh, Court of Appeals judge. He is a constituent of mine, and we just had the opportunity to meet today. And I know that he's with his two children, and we talked about the busy life that he's been having from clerking very early in your career with uh, uh, Chief Justice Kay before she was the Chief Justice, and also work that he'd done in uh, pro bono work, frankly, that his firm has done uh, with regard to uh, legal defense for indigent clients. Uh, he is obviously a man, as Senator Bonasek said, who's had a diverse uh, amount of experience, and I certainly look forward to your continued service with great dignity and integrity on the Court of Appeals. So I am so happy. This is the second Westchester uh, resident. I've had a chance to applaud uh, this, this in the past few weeks, and I am very, very proud that you, as my constituent, will be uh, such an important part in our state history and our state judicial system. Congratulations. Senator DeFrancisco. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, despite the fact that the uh, nominee could not explain to me the rule against perpetuities in the Judiciary Committee, uh, I do wholeheartedly support uh, his confirmation I'm not going to repeat what's been mentioned already about his qualifications, but uh, it's such a broad experience that he brings to the bench because the, the Court of Appeals hears every single type of case known to the law. And to have somebody with that broad experience there to uh, share with the other judges is simply outstanding. The governor should be complimented for this uh, nominee. And I agree with uh, John Bosick. I believe that uh, this is probably the most uh, diverse and impressive resume that I've seen, and I've been here a few years. Uh, I, I can't help but commenting that your term expires in the year 2030. Senator Larkin will be 102 on that day, and he will — oh, he's gone — and he will be here he will be here to uh, uh, vote for your next 14 years. So congratulations and best of luck. <coughs> well, here he is. <laughs> what are you hollering at me now? <laughs> he doesn't respect his elders. <laughs> Senator Nazolio. Thank you, Mr. President, on the nomination. As I look forward to the day when Bill Larkin's here, I know I won't be, uh, but I thank uh, the governor for 
this tremendous nomination will have lasting impact on the citizens of our state. It, the nominee, Michael Garcia, brings uh, to this job a wonderful history of employment. Before that, a wonderful record of academic and scholastic achievement. Uh, first in his class from Albany Law School, uh, I talked to a number of members of that class uh, who were so still impressed, but not so much with his academic performance, uh, but his demeanor, his uh, collegial at attitude, his uh, focus on those who weren't in maybe the top uh, five or 10 percent of the class, but the entire class. Most importantly, I believe, besides the wonderful academic and professional experiences, this nominee has a compelling personal story, one uh, that began uh, with his family deciding they were going to be coming to America to seek a better life. That's a story that is the story of all of us, but in Michael Garcia's case, it's a subject of recent history. And that compelling story is about how people can come to New York, a place of opportunity, work hard, study hard, be involved hard in terms of their own work ethic. And that work ethic uh, translated into the success of this fine New Yorker. He carries with him that legacy. He carries with him that story, a story that's a story of all of us, but one that can never be overtold. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. President, I uh, wholeheartedly endorse uh, this wonderful nomination. Uh, I wish him a long and successful tenure on the most important court, arguably, uh, in all uh, of these United States, short of the United States Supreme Court. Thank you, Mr. President. Godspeed to the nominee. Senator Hassel Thompson. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to um, also congratulate the governor on his appointment of Mr. Garcia. Uh, we had a chance to talk with him before and certainly ask questions of him today. Um, I, too, am very pleased, as is Senator DeFrancisco, at the fact that we, we talk about who's on the bench and, and um, the qualification of who's on the bench, but there's several levels of diversity uh, besides gender and ethnicity that becomes important. And I think because he brings a talent that no one of the judges that I've had the good fortune to help to confirm has the broad spectrum that he does um, I listened to his answers and I listened to his understanding of cyber intelligence and some of the other concerns that was raised by um, Senator Nozzolio. And we need someone who has a much broader perspective than just com what I call common law. And so I was very pleased with this nomination. I was very pleased to give my um, affirmation to him being appointed, but certainly uh, he has a, a breadth of knowledge that's important, but I also understood that he had a humility and a caring about public service, that someone in a position as he has been, making the kind of money that he can make, would choose to leave and come back into public service. And that said a great deal for me. So I, I do appreciate, Mr. President, the opportunity to um, speak on behalf of this candidate today and hope that, like me, my, my colleagues here will see in him what I saw and vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Garcia, from one Westchester resident to another, congratulations. We now have two Court of Appeals judges here. We're doing pretty good in Westchester, huh? God bless to you and your family. After reading your resume, I'll say one word. Wow, very impressive. We are lucky to have you. God bless. Senator Diaz. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, today 
I'm supposed to be the happiest man here. I'm supposed to be the happiest person. Because a Hispanic has been appointed. A Hispanic has been nominated. So me as a Puerto Rican, born in Puerto Rico, in Bayamón, Puerto Rico, in La Cuchilla, I should be proud. Also because we minorities, we fight, we struggle, so our people get considered. But every time that someone in our community gets nominated or appointed, I would like to feel, I would like to feel that everybody else, that everyone else has approved that, that person as the best one in the group. Today we have a problem that concerns me as Puerto Rican, as Hispanic, I have a problem. The New York State Trial Association the trial lawyers has recommended among the candidates four, four non-Hispanic candidates and they marked them or issued them or recommended, recommended them as highly qualified and highly recommended, four of them. Then the only minority in the whole group is being sent to us as just qualified and just recommended against four non-Hispanic, non-minorities, Highly qualified and highly recommended. Today we should feel proud because there is a minority. You know, but the question is, when the governor chose a minority that being been appointed, that have been recommended as, recommend, as, as recommended, just recommended and just qualified against four, highly recommended and highly qualified, it takes away, it takes away our pride. Because many of you might be thinking, oh, he's being just appointed be just because he's Hispanic. Because the governor jump, jump not only one, not two, not three, four, non-Hispanic or non-minority, Highly qualified, highly recommended. Why? Why? If I, I could assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I could assure you that if the, if the thing were in the other side and there were a black or Hispanic being recommended as highly qualified, and highly recommended, and they choose one on the other side of the, of the, of the, of the spectrum, only qualified and only recommended against a minority, highly qualified and highly recommended, I could assure you that the bosses from New York City and from all black and Hispanic community would be picketing and calling this racism. So, I should be proud, and I'm proud as a Hispanic, and we are appointing a Hispanic. But I'm going to call on the Governor Cuomo, Mr. Governor Cuomo, stop doing this. Every time that you, that we, then, then don't use, then don't, don't use the trial lawyers or any other group, don't ask for their recommendation. Just go and do what you have to do, but don't put us through this. Because this is, this is, this is, it's like saying, oh, let me give you Hispanic so the Hispanic community could be satisfied. 
If all of you are saying that he's, white, that he's highly qualified, that he's the best in the world, why come the trial lawyer didn't, didn't say that? That's my concern, Mr. President. And that's what disturbed me. And that's what I don't even know how to do today. Thank you very much.